Welcome to tonight's episode of Nightmare Project. Tonight, you are going to experience four terrifying Cabin in the Woods stories submitted by our subscribers. Late, on the third evening stay at a cabin that I rented for some much needed R&R, I again hear scratching noises coming from beneath the old, wide, creaky floorboards. It didn't bother me much before because it sounded like it was coming from another room under the floor. This time it was much louder and coming from underfoot. It went on all night and kept me awake. I called the owner of the cabin the next morning, hoping he would catch and remove whatever animal was under the floor before it drove me insane. I waited for the owner to show up before I started out hiking for the day. I figured I would make myself scarce while he did his thing. Before I left, I watched him grab several live traps and a flashlight from the back of his pickup. Getting back from my hike a few hours later, there were several flashing lights from police cars and a coroner's vehicle parked in front of the cabin. As I approached, I was stopped by an officer asking what my business was here. After explaining who I was, she informed me that several human remains have been discovered under the cabin. I'm much older now, but when I was an 11 year old boy, I would travel to our small cabin on Black Lake with my parents. I made a friend there the year before named Devin Mitchell. I was looking forward to hanging out with him again this year. I never knew where he lived but I could always find him at the beach. Once again, I went down to the beach and there he was. I knew it was him because he was wearing the same t-shirt and shorts that I remember him wearing last year. We always had to play in the sand because he was too afraid to go into the water. He said he wasn't a good swimmer. I told him that I understand I'm not a good swimmer either. Maybe you could just go into the water up to your knees like my mother allows me to do. He wouldn't even do that. He wasn't very tall for our age, and he didn't look like he had grown at all since last year. I remembered asking him where he lived, and he pointed at the lake. Teasing him slightly, I asked, Do you live in the water? Are you a mermaid? We laughed, and they assumed he meant across the lake. We continued walking up and down the beach, playing like kids. We played together all afternoon, making a game out of anything using our active imaginations. I was sad when I had to leave, and I asked my mother if I could stay for one more day. No chance, since it was Sunday and my parents had to work tomorrow. In the car on the way home, my dad asked me if I had fun. I said, yeah, I hung out with Devin again this year. My mother asked, Devin who? I said, Devin Mitchell. She looked back over the seat and said, that's not possible. I remembered she had a very serious or concerned expression on her face, and we didn't talk about it again the rest of the way home. My parents sold the lake house the next year. Five years later, I googled Devin Mitchell to see if I could locate my old friend. I came across an article about a 10-year-old boy who had drowned at Black Lake. I recognized the boy in the photo right away. It was Devin. He was wearing the same clothes. The date of the article was 10 years before I met him. I texted my friend, it's 5 o'clock, woohoo, I'm leaving work and excited to spend the weekend with my buddy and fishing partner. I also texted him that I'm on my way up north to the cabin. He gets out of work in another half hour and he'll be on his way up too. We've been planning this for a week and a half and are looking forward to it, slaying some fish as the old phrase goes. All I needed to do was fill up my gas tank and get some grub. Halfway up to the cabin I stopped to fill up my car. Walking through the quickie mart at the gas station, I noticed a peculiar looking guy standing in the other aisle, staring at me from over the top of the shelves. When I caught his gaze, I put my head back down and continued to look for some snacks. I looked up again, and now he's staring at me from the front of the store while I'm in the back. What the heck is his problem, I thought to myself. I continued to shop and figured I would say something to him when I got up to the register, except he was nowhere to be found. I arrived at the cabin at dusk. 
put my things away and sat on the porch with a drink, waiting for my friend to arrive. Peering through the woods, I see someone standing out there. It was getting dark, so I couldn't be sure. What I thought was the outline of a person standing by the tree from the distance wasn't moving. The cabin we rented is in a secluded location, with no neighbors. My friend arrived shortly after and I took another look, but couldn't see anything. Fishing went well. We slayed them, reaching our limit. Arriving back at the cabin a few hours later, it was dark now. My friend needed to go up to his car to grab his phone charger that he forgot to bring in. He said to me, is there another cabin close by? I said, not for at least 30 miles. And that's why this cabin was a primo fishing spot. I thought I seen someone walking in the woods. I paused, what? At this point, I knew that I wasn't imagining things. I asked him where. He said he couldn't be sure if it wasn't an animal, but it looked like a person to him. Waking up in the middle of the night, I made my way to the bathroom and then to the kitchen for a drink of water. My only light came from the refrigerator. When I opened the fridge door, I dropped the glass of water that I was holding onto the floor and the glass broke. The light from the fridge revealed blood all over the floor. I yelled at my friend and he came running from his bedroom. I turned on the lights and our jaws dropped. There was blood everywhere on the floor, like something dragged itself through the cabin. We found the door was partially open and closed it and locked it immediately. As we looked through the cabin, we followed the blood trail upstairs, and to my complete horror, the blood trail made a circle around my bed. It reminded me of a sacrificial ritual. We called the police in the morning and never returned to that cabin again. Staying at a remote cabin in the woods is not what I would call a good time, but I did it for my husband because I know that he enjoys the outdoors, hunting and fishing. There was a lake not too far away that is quickly accessible, so that was a big selling point for him. There was another feature about the cabin that he never told me about. My horrifying experience started the very first day. I pulled into the driveway from picking up some groceries for the week. When I glanced into the rearview mirror, I saw something standing behind my car staring at me. I turned around to look and there was no one there. I was shaken because I know what I saw. I got out, looked around the car, and into the woods, but nobody. The second day, I was getting ready for bed brushing my teeth over the sink in the bathroom when I looked up from rinsing my mouth into the mirror. There was a ghost behind me. Terrified, I screamed. My husband came running and held me. I told him what happened, and he laughed. I was taken back at his response to my complete terror. I mean, I was visibly shaking, and this is how he responds? Calmly, he said to me, You saw Jeb, that's all. What? He went on to say that Jeb built this cabin in the 50s and died while he was building it. He continued, All of the locals know about Jeb, and they've seen him at one point or another, and I shouldn't be scared. Seriously? I replied as if to say, Why the heck have you never told me there was a creepy ghost haunting this cabin? My husband goes there every year. I stay home now.